Well, I think the critical thing to realize is that the world as we know it today, as we live it, our reality is historically made. It is, it is manufactured by what we call historical forces. And if you, if you believe that the present arrangements are not sustainable, it, it would help to understand how they were made. It would help to understand how the institutions, the social relationships, the global relationships were created historically. And if you wish to unmake them or modify them, you, if you have some background on how they were created in the first instance, I think you'll be well on your way. But it's also important, I believe, to historicize the process of what development is. We often imagine that the arrangements today we call development have suddenly appeared. Uh, many of them are hundreds of years in the making, and it's good to know the genealogy of that historical process. Well, it is often assumed that development is an, an imagined circumstance, and that each culture imagines development differently. Assuming that the humanities is about the study of civilizations and civilizations can be compared and contrast in terms of their priorities, then clearly the humanities perspective is very important for a comparative understanding of what development is. And what we have seen in different parts of the world is that development is perceived and pursued very differently by different cultures. There is no consensus globally on what development is and ought to be. And so I see my role in the humanities as helping to understand the intersections of cultures, the, the crossroads of civilizations, where we can have a dialogue about priorities that are common to all of us, as well as those that are distinct. So yes, we are at the crossroads of the imagination. Three words. Implementation, implementation, implementation. The world has been overstudied. Most parts of the world have been researched, have been studied. There are hundreds and hundreds of research papers written by the, the finest scholars available. Implementation is invariably the problem. The communication between the research and the researchers and the policymakers there is an enormous gulf that has to be bridged. Then the policymakers have to comprehend the significance of the research and have a willingness to implement the research implementation. So we have significant gaps to be bridged between the research, the comprehension of it, the implementation of it. And that is, of course, I believe is where the crisis exists.